Clyde yeah. Barker or was that before that? Uh, yeah, that was the, uh, yeah, I think that was the first, yeah, definitely that was the first one. Um, yeah, I was like 18 years old. It was back during the 90s boom and they would practically hire anyone who could hold a pen. And yeah, the Clyde Barker thing was, uh, you know, I didn't really, you're the first thing you want to draw, like, especially back then was like something superhero-ish. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, what's this shit, bro? I don't even know. <laughs> Not even quite horror. But um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. And that's actually how I met the uh, Wachowskis, who I went on to work in films yeah. and stuff. So a very fortunate first job. So how you, you were met done. them through Clyde Barker? Like the Wachowskis? They were hired as, you know, back then, before they, they were hired as the writers on this comic. Uh, James Robinson was the initial writer for, I think, the first two issues. Then he bailed for something else, and they were two up-and-coming writers. And, uh, yeah, they put them on that book. And, um, yeah, it was weird. And it was kind of around the same time they were almost about to sell their first screenplay, you know. That, that year of Ecto Kid that we worked together there, they were just selling their first screenplay and, you know, getting their toes into the entertainment business and all that. And then you worked with them through the Matrix trilogy, right? Yeah, pretty much. They did their first movie, Bound, and uh, I believe the solid world of uh, the comic book industry sort for the fly-by-night world of show business. So I said no to Bound, and then they, it was really funny. I was drawing X-Men at Marvel, and they, uh, Lana was trying to get me to work on Matrix, and I was like, nah. And then she like knew I was dumb and making a terrible mistake. So she said, you can work on your comic at the same time. And so they brought me out to L.A. and I would do storyboards and I would do my comic at nighttime. Mostly, you know. Yeah. Mostly I was going out and drinking and doing all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff and then cramming it all in at the last second. But uh, <laughs> so that, you, was, that was a, a, kind of a wild experience. So you, did you get to actually like flesh out some of those iconic Matrix scenes, like storyboard them out or... Well, yeah, I did them all. I did all the, me and a few, uh, you know, obviously Jeff Darrow did the uh, concept designs, another amazing uh, storyboard artist called uh, Tony Kunataki worked on it. Another guy, Warren Manzer, uh, Colin Grant was the other storyboard artist. And yeah, between all of us, we, they had very specific ideas of what they wanted. And uh, um, yeah, so the boards are, are, look very much like the movies. They're pretty much spot on. So yeah, I got to draw a bullet time. Sadly, oh, I was going to ask. I was like, "Were you you got to actually figure out how to draw it?" And <laughs> no, I was just kind of like this, uh, you know. Uh, I, I held the pencil. I was like eight. I was like maybe twenty, twenty one, doing that. Mm. And, um, yeah, they just kind of liked me, and I was, you know, um, followed direction well, I guess. And, <laughs> Well, cinemagraphically, that movie was very different and new for the time with the 360 degree um, yeah. stuff, too, along with the bullet time stuff. So that had to be tough to because I know storyboarding is it's got to show that motion. So that must have been challenging. All of that, you know, to, for me, it was just about it was just a bunch of drawings moving around, the, you know, basically that that pose. And I was mystified about the technical side of all of it, really, and still am. Uh, but yeah, I got to go to the set and see that setup, which was pretty cool, which was like this giant green space with like this kind of like w undulating kind of wave of camera, a camera setup that goes in a circle that kind of, you know, so they would, that, you know, created that effect. That's cool. That, you know, wow. be, be there for it and stand awkwardly in the corner, you know, that's the weird thing. <laughs> it's like, the, you know, you kind of are the scout, you go out first. And a lot of the times, you know, when I, the entire time I worked on the Matrix films, I was never, you know, it was never a greenlit movie. And every time I finished a couple months on it or a few weeks, it always looked like it wasn't going to happen, you know. And uh, when I finished it the last time, it looked like it had gone down in flames and then it just kept you would get uh, resurrecting. And I think, uh, yeah, when I had finished it, my work on it, I think Keanu was... Uh, I don't know if he was even in the mix yet. And then they, it was kind of dead. And then he came in and, you know, brought it back to life. Wow. I don't think I realized that it was, it lived in that pre-production phase for so long. Where well, were... years, I mean, it was long for me because it was my little life back then, you know. And uh, Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's cool. Now I can look back and really appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, back then I was just so such a fish out of water. Um but yeah, there were some some fun adventures in there for sure.
did you find did you find that that opened up a lot of different doors for you afterwards because it's that's an interesting thing to start with what ended up being such a big movie well that's why I sort of that I did comics for a while because that was my first uh, love but I did wind up at when they started up the sequels that kind of put me on the path for movies for geez the better part of a decade and you know those are great adventures but yeah over the last I don't know, five years or so I've been really trying to do comics as much as possible I did work on the new matrix film but that was the only one uh, since Stand on Guard, I think. <laughs>